Art Conservation Foundation in Naperville on the McDonald Farm. And today we're going to talk about conservation at home and how people can get involved in being more eco-friendly. Right? We're now in the rain garden. On the outside of the rain garden where the ground is higher, you find plants that like the drier conditions. This is prairie drop seed and it's got a big deep root. It likes it dry. It can, doesn't never need to be watered. Big deep root system. This is the one of the plants that can metabolize carbon. So some of the gas stations are planting this and it can eat gasoline and oil, breaking apart the carbon atoms. So these native plants have a lot of function. They do, they're working plants that we can utilize in our landscape. This is one called Indian grass and it was a mainstay of the tall grass prairie. It likes it dry and it gets quite tall. Waves in the wind and the birds eat the seeds on these beautiful plants. Some of the other ones that we're looking at here, this is a goldenrod, and this gets a bad reputation because of uh, it blooms in the fall, and the, the bad hay fever plant is ragweed. Ragweed is the one that causes problems, and it's not the goldenrod. Look at the root systems on some of these plants. So they don't have to be watered. They, they'll grow very easily in, in these areas and have tremendous root systems that are pulling in all the water that they need. Okay, at the McDonald farm here, Lenore's chicken yard has been turned into an oak nursery. We try to educate people on the value of oak trees and that all trees are not created equal. The best tree we have in the Chicago region is an oak tree. It has more environmental function, it feeds the birds, feeds the butterflies, lasts for two or three hundred years and can be used for furniture and flooring and firewood and a lot of value to these trees and yet we're not planting them and they're not reproducing well in the landscapes. So we've got to get back to the way it was, plant more oak trees. We have five different types of oaks here right now, red oak, white oak, swamp oak, chinkapin, and bur oak. So each tree has some different form and different shape. They like different types of climate and uh, water features. So the swamp oak, for example, likes it wet. And there's some that like it dry, so we can have an oak for almost any areas. Some of the oaks don't grow as big, so you put them along the street. Other ones that get this big spreading thing can be used for shade for homes and a lot of different uses for these trees. Now we're in the garden in front of the main office. We've got the prairie drop seed with its beautiful plumes of seeds and a lot of these plants are named aptly. This one is drop seed so it leans over and drops the seeds and then will spread across the prairie. This is the goldenrod in the fall. It's a beautiful nectar plant for the butterflies and bees. You've got the black-eyed Susans over here, Joe Pieweed, the tall beautiful plant. This one's past its bloom time but it's still very pretty in the landscape. And over here you've got the milkweed. So we've all heard about the monarchs, and the monarchs need milkweed to lay their eggs on. We just saw a monarch flying around here. The common milkweed is one of its favorite plants to, to utilize for that. It's not a very um, used plant in, in typical yards, but there's two other kinds of milkweed that we can look at that are very pretty and easily adapted to a traditional landscape. This is the milkweed. We talked about and you can see where it got its name. So when the leaf gets broken off or on this pod you can see the milky sticky substance and it's actually poisonous and when most other things like rabbit or your dog other animals deer will not even touch this plant because of the poisonousness of the of the plant the plant has that poison to protect itself from being chewed down by rabbits but the monarch has actually found a way to ingest the poison and then they make themselves poisonous so birds don't want to eat the monarch. So it's a wonderful adaptation that this plant has made and the monarch said, well, if nobody wants that, I'll take it. 
and they found a way to live with that poison and make it useful for them. Interesting story. These plants oftentimes have gotten very aptly named plants. This one is called Cytodes, and you see where they got the name on it. This is the cone flower. You can see the shape, the cone shaped head. They're very attractive to um, birds. They'll come and eat these seeds. Finches, goldfinches, love these seeds and they'll come and eat on them. So a lot of these native plants, the black eyed Susan is another one. You can see where it got its eye, the look of the eye, the black eyed Susan. Very um, easy to grow, nice plants for the landscape and also very attractive to birds and butterflies. This is called uh, Big Blue Stem is the name of the plant and it was also called Turkey Foot by the Native Americans. You can see the shape of this seed head at the top and how they got the name Turkey Foot for this one. The water comes around, falls back into the tank and gets pumped around again and then if you want we can divert the pump here and we can pump it out into a garden hose that we can water with you could wash your car with it, wash your dog, or whatever, with a garden hose pressure from rainwater. So to take it one step farther, we're working with a company in uh, Illinois here that repurposes the rain barrels. So these barrels have come from around the world. This particular barrel came from Greece with olives and pickles in it. And when they come over here, they can't be used anymore. It's too expensive to send them back to Greece. So we repurpose them into rain barrels. We put a screen on the top so the mosquitoes don't reproduce. We put valving on the front so that it's easily drained. And we teach people how to use rain as a resource and that it's not a waste product that we have to get rid of. It's something that will be better for our house plants, better for our pets. Chlorine-free water that has minerals that our plants will grow much better with rain water on them than tap water different barrels. The black ones come from South America, the blue ones come from um, the Middle East, and the gray ones too. And they're all outfitted and ready to use. We sell them lower than you can buy them anywhere. The idea for us is not a big profit margin, it's about educating people about the quality of water. With the rain garden behind me, we're looking at the rain barrel. And we're using the roof as a collector. And it comes down the downspout, and pours into the rain barrel where we can save it for a dry day. This one will hold 55 gallons of water and we've got the spout down here where we can empty the water into a bucket or connect the hose to it. Really easy to work and we show people how easy it is to set it up to. So that's about the Conservation at Home program. The beauty of this program is we'll help you. So you've seen some things today but how would I get started? and we make it very easy for you. I'll come to your house if needed. So we give you plant information, where you could get the plants, what plants to pick, and if you need it, I will come to your house and help you personally. So all of that for free, how can you beat that? Conservation at home.